Um, All right. This is the uh, welcome to the meeting again. Uh, Kariti, take it away. All right. Um, so one of the things that we have been talking about for the last uh, few weeks uh, related to the new proposal for the uh, realms API, the what we call the call level boundary, as the term used by Shu. I think I like it. It's a, it's a call level boundary, uh, and and um, and and one of the questions of all these meetings has been mostly for from Mark. Does it does it work? for membranes <laughs> and, and so we were in the quest to validate that. The good news is that it does work. That's a, good, that's a very good news. Um, the second good news is that in order to implement it is a very tiny membrane. We're talking about, uh, I think I can probably list it here. Uh, we're talking about less than two Ks GSIP mini five. That's a very tiny library, about 300 lines of code. Uh, obviously, this is a very simple membrane implementation. Uh, the goal was to, we were trying to figure uh, a good use case. And, and one of the use cases from Jordan uh, was that he wanted to have, in fact, identity discontinuity. He wanted to have what he has with iFrame space exactly what we have with iframe, which is I spin up an iframe, I get the window out of that iframe and I use it for some, some things. Um, so how can we create a membrane that allows to have that on top of the API? Um, so uh, let me show you some code here. Uh, so basically the idea is that what if on top of Realm, I can create a new type of Realm. I don't have a good name for it. I call it near Realm, but really could be iframe Realms or whatever, um, where this new class will have the methods of the previous specification, which is basically the global these. And from global these, you can access eval or you can do eval directly here, whatever. And, and you can import anything. We can actually make it import if we want to. Um, and that, that, that's um, a, a very simple example where on top of the new API, we can uh, uh, create a layer that provides the all API. That means there's a generalization process there. Uh, so that was a goal. Um, so as a result of this, then we have a simple page. In this case, obviously we're using an iframe to emulate it around because we don't we eventually, we can use the polyphy from Leo, but I haven't get to, to that point. Um, and then we have an index that uh, what it's doing is basically trying to get a, a realm, and in that realm, trying to do access the global days. And the same kind of examples that we have before, like what is the identity of the array versus the other array? What happened if I create an array? What is the length of it on the other side? And so on. So it's basically testing that the, the membrane is transparent in the, in, the, in the sense that you have access to all the objects that this uh, order realm has, obviously through, through proxies. And, and uh, it, it gives you the impression that you are actually uh, inter intertwining two different object graphs, basically. You just have access to two global values, the global value of the app and the global value of the, uh, of the, of the main window. The incubator uh, global and the uh, round global. I like that cl clarifying question. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the uh, so the way I think of a transparent membrane at a realm boundary is it seems like you're still at a realm boundary uh, as if there was no membrane there, but it's but you still have all the identity discontinuities of my array versus your array and an instance of your array is not instance of my array constructor. And then there's the near membrane that tries to make those identity discontinuities go away. The nearness is that it tries to make objects that come from the other realm appear as if they come from this realm. Um, right. It tries to, so which one is this? This one is the regular one, it's not the near one. We, we are not, not doing any identity but well, the demonstration was to make sure that we do okay. have the capability to implement the membrane. And okay. then on top of that, we could do a, a identity correction if we want to, it's okay. not, not really a problem. 
Great. Um, so <laughs> sorry for the confusion on Nier because I was using some of the things that we were using on Nier, so I copied some of them. Um, but but the, the idea is that you just have, you create a realm object and this realm object give you access to the global disk, just like okay. before, and you can access anything from that with different identity. That's why the result of this operation should be false. Because okay, great. Yeah, not the same. Um, and and the, the construction of that array does have a length of three in this case. And, and, and I haven't tested many other things, but so far things are looking good. Okay. Um, uh, now, I wanted to get into the details of how we achieve this, which I think that's the interesting part of, of mm -hmm. it. So what kind of uh, um, infrastructure we have created or what kind of uh, um, mechanism we're using to get the representation of an object from another ROM into the incubator ROM and vice versa, and what kind of structure we use for that. Mm -hmm. And it was a very interesting uh, few weeks of research. And I think it's, it's, um, it's, an inter it's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, so let me go back to this file here, which is really the, 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 the important piece of it in it. Um, this is a function, this, this, file, this module has one function whose job is to be executed in, uh, I think I probably skip this part, I think we'll go into the meet directly. So the idea is that because you don't have a way to pass a reference to an object, um, you need to find ways to somehow provide sufficient information to the other side about the proxy that they have to create with the shape of that proxy and, uh, and let the other side to create it for you. But at the same time, you still need to have a way to communicate the identity if that proxy comes back to me or if I have to send the same thing again. That's really the, the point of the membrane. So as a, the fundamental issue to resolve was uh, precisely that. How can I create a foreign proxy? I call it a foreign proxy, a proxy on the other side, uh, whose operations on uh, uh, any operation on top of that proxy should be reflected on these other side. Therefore, there has to be a mechanism to tell the other side, you have to perform this operation on the target of this proxy, knowing that the proxy will never have a reference to the target because there's no way to do that. Um, um, the mechanism that I came up with for this and, and uh, I, hopefully I will be able to articulate it, is that normally when you implement a regular membrane, and let me go to the, the, the membrane. So this is the handler of a membrane. Very straightforward in terms of, if you know how to do membranes, this is, this, this is uh, very easy to understand. Um, so what we're, what, we're, what we're doing here is a regular operation where it's getting the stuff that you need from the proxy hook and the shadow target and figure out what the target is, which is associated to the handler in some degree, and uh, perform a reflect operation on that object, the target. So that's the, the normal mechanism of a membrane is that if you get the pieces that you need, you understand what operation you need, you have the original target, you have the shadow target, and then you carry on reflective operations. Based most of it is via reflect dot something. Um, so in the case of apply, you use reflect or apply. In the case of construct, you use reflect or construct. In the case of define property, you use um, the, the, the similar mechanism and so on. So if you read this code is, and you understand membranes, you will you probably get um, a, a fair amount of it. Uh, now, of course, because we don't have access to the target, we need to figure out how to do this operation on the other side. The technique that I'm using basically for each of these reflective operations that you normally carry on on a proxy uh, trap for a reflection uh, mechanism, I create a version of that reflect or applied in this case and reflect or construct in this case that can work through the membrane. And what that means is really that it, 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 it is very similar, but it's not the same thing. And, and let me try to explain how it's very similar. It's very similar in the amount of information that needs to be passed around. It's very similar into the uh, result of that operation, but because you cannot pass objects, you have to pass something. And for this implementation, I use, I, I use the term pointer, which is probably very wrong, but the pointer is basically a function 
that uh, it can be passed around between the, the, the realms. Uh, and every time that you pass it, it gets wrapped, obviously, and so on. But the point of that function is that when someone call it, uh, invoke it, it will, it will set up a local reference on that side of the realm that, that owns the, of the function. It will set a local reference that you could use immediately after from the realm. Basically, it's kind of a allocation. You allocate uh, something and then you carry on the operation on that, on that thing. Uh, so that way... Um, can, can we walk through a, a very simple example where we na name the objects? Uh, in, in discussions like this, uh, there's um, a kind of confusion I call lost in pronouns. The, there's the this and the that and the, the, this thing, and, and it's just kind of hard to keep track. Um, yeah, let me let me try to find a better a better example. This one, I'll, I'll walk you through the example. So you're, you're hitting the delete property okay. uh, that trap. That trap only receives the shadow target and the key. The operation to be performed is a reflective operation on the real target on the other side of the membrane, the other realm. And for that, you still need the key because you need to tell what key you want to delete. But because you cannot have access to the target directly what you have at hand is what, what I call a target pointer. Target pointer is a function. So when you call this function that is coming, it's called, it's called foreign because it's coming from the other side. It's callable because it can be traveled through the, the callable boundary. And this is the implementation of it. This is the delete property reflection. Um, when I call this function, this function will receive a function that is wrapped, it's going to be wrapped again, and the key for it. Uh, and let me let me look for that for that implementation. Um, uh, here is the implementation of that. Uh, what what this function receive is basically the two things: the function and the key. In this case, it will receive the wrap function. That doesn't matter. So so by key, we're talking about a, the key is the, the property, property key. Property, the property key. Yeah, the property key. Yeah. Okay. This is by the way, this is TypeScript, so you see the types on it. Um, so it received the key and something that allow me to find out what the corresponding target is. Um, if, we so, had, if we had uh, symbols as weak map keys, would this just be a symbol? It could be a symbol, but it turns out that it's going to be a lot more complicated because mm -hmm. one thing that I figure on this implementation is that we don't need weak maps for this membrane. Oh. Because we use the closure as a artifact to create a membrane. We'll get to that. But, uh, can um, you collect cycles? Yes. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a second. We, we'll get to that in a second. But first, let me, let me walk you through the delete. So when the delete uh, callable reflective uh, mechanism is invoked with a target pointer, that is a function that's coming from the other side. So it's wrapped. <laughs> But it's wrap of a function that was already provided by this realm. And we'll get to that in a second. But it's a function that has been wrapped twice. But remember that the specification does not define this multi-wrapping. In fact, one of the things that we got from Google was, does it work? Um, the, the, can this be optimized? Therefore, if you wrap a wrap function, you don't need to do a do double wrapping or double call. You, you go straight into the, the target. So you can reduce the, 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 the multi-wrapping problem. Um, so this function, when you invoke it, its job is to simply set something, allocate something in memory that can be retrieved by calling a local function, which is the get reference. And this is a, a, a little tricky, but once you understand the concept, uh, it becomes clear that when you do an operation, when you need to do an operation on the other side, the job is to say, this is my pointer. I give it to you. And obviously the pointer was not created by me. It's coming from the other side because I'm just giving it back to the other side. And with that pointer, the other side will be able to invoke that function will set something in memory that I know is never going to throw an error. And in the following line, I will be able to retrieve the reference to whatever that function was using. 
Okay. So in this case, I call the pointer and in the following line, I will be able to access the reference, which is the object on this side that correspond to the thing that was passed to the other side and come back to me. Okay. And, and at that point I have the target. So I, cannot, I can perform the regular operation on that target and return the value because in this case, the operation returns the true or false. This is the reflect dot delete property basically. There's nothing special about this. This is just cache. Okay. Um, so and it's, it's, the same, it's the same kind of process every time. Now, what is this target function? Let me go, let me go there. The target function is the wick map implementation basically. Let me see if I can look really quick to here. So um, when I need to create a pointer to give it to the other side, and, and I need to do so every time that I need to pass an object around the membrane, uh, around the, the, the boundary, because I cannot pass the object, I need to create a pointer for that object. Whether that's an object function or array, it doesn't matter. I need to create a pointer. This pointer is created by this method whose job is to determine what is the metadata associated to the target? In this case, the value. That means, is this, um, is this object an, a, a, an object, an, an array, or a, a function? Um, what kind of name does that, that function have? What kind of uh, proto it has, in case that is an arrow function or a regular function, and so on. So this is the information that the membrane needs in order to create a shadow target on the other side. And this information are bits, basically. This is just regular Boolean and, and, and string values. Aside from that, um, this is just the way we, we collect all that information. Aside from that, I need to tell the other side that it needs to create a, 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 a proxy for me, for this value. And I do that by calling the foreign push target. This is a mechanism, a callable that is provided by the other side. So whenever I need to push a target to the other side, I use this function. And with this function, I will pass all the primitive values that represent the shape of the shadow target. And I give the pointer, which is basically an arrow function in this case, whose job is to use the value from the closure to set the reference every time that this arrow function is invoked. Therefore, when Whenever this arrow function comes back to me, this is the pointer. Whenever it comes back to me, I will be able to invoke it. It will be able to set the reference, which is a local method here. And I will be able to get the reference out of it immediately after of, of the invocation of the, of, of the, of the proxy uh, of the pointer. That's basically the artifact that we use for the membrane. That's it, there's nothing else. This is the trick that, that, that we're using. Wow, that's really interesting and impressive. I agree. Uh, what I'm trying to puzzle through is whether what the garbage collection properties of this are, because I think I understand what the argument is that says that it should collect cycles, but. Yeah, so if, if, I, if I push a proxy onto the other side, um, I, I obviously in order to do that, I need to give the pointer. The pointer has a reference in the closure to value, which is the original target. I probably should call the target. Let me, put, let me call it real target. So it's a uh, real target. Um, or original target better. That's a term that we normally use. Original target. Um, so if I if I if if I push a, a proxy to the other side, that means the other side can use that proxy for whatever reason. Um, I I um, that that proxy that is created on the other side holds a reference to this pointer, this pointer function. The pointer function has a closure uh, over the original target reference. Um, so in order for the garbage collector to collect original target, that means that the other side has to release the proxy of the other side. 
if you release the proxy on the other side, release the handler for that proxy, the, pro the handler has a reference to this pointer, this one goes away. So the, the cycle issue is of course that nobody's releasing first. Right, but it's the same thing. If no one is releasing first, but no one is pointing to anything on the cycle, the buckle, um, there is the, this is the same, the same mechanism that is used uh, today with iFriends. It's essentially the same thing. So you have two realms. You, you're basically the, the, the exotic wrapping function is essentially just an extra wrapper around a function that uh, allows you to collect these cycles the same way that the iframe does it today. It's not, it's not different. So the, the, and these, the membrane here can, if, you, if you're using proxy.revocable to create these proxies, then the membrane as a whole can also be revoked, in which case, the inside the 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 subgraph inside the membrane can also be collected i i have an experiment with revoke because the api doesn't give you the ability to revoke through the membrane but certainly if you hold reference to all the revocable functions you will be able to shut down the membrane because uh, basically you're shutting down the handler the handler is disconnected. The handler goes away. The garbage collector collects the handler and the pointers. You don't have a pointer anymore. So mm -hmm. there's no operation that you can carry on from that point. Okay. So I don't see a flaw in this, but if this actually works as it seems to, it's very surprising because when I first introduced weak maps into ECMAScript, um, uh, I, the, the two garbage collection problems that membranes make you face, uh, cycles crossing the membrane and then or, on the one hand and collection of the subgraph when the membrane is revoked on the other hand. At the time, I thought that you had to use ephemeron collection uh, in the garbage collector itself in order to do that. Uh, you needed a, a um, you know, if, uh, you, you needed the and in the, um, in the reachability calculation that, that a value is reachable in a weak map uh, if the key is reachable and the map is reachable. Uh, and that normal garbage collection without weak maps only gives you or um, something is reachable if, uh, you know, any of a number of things that lead to it are reachable. Uh, so this is only using or you know normal or garbage collection. So if it's able to solve both of those problems, then my original reasoning way back when were, was terribly flawed. Uh, so uh, so I'll just I'll just mention that I'm, it's too hard to think through. Yeah, I I think uh well uh, so most likely then this implementation is more incorrect. So let's try to figure a scenarios in which we can validate. Um, so I'll need some help on that. What kind of validation can we do in order to make determination if this is sufficient or not? So, I mean, I could use a weak map in here, basically. No, so instead, of, instead of using this mechanism of the closure, I don't use the value from the closure anymore. I create the arrow. Um, yeah. and, but it's, you know, yeah. it's, a, so, it's a little so, bit more tricky. Yeah, weak maps cannot be emulated in the rest of the language without weak maps. So weak maps are, are definitely themselves introducing a new fundamental garbage collection logic that can't be emulated without it. Um, uh, what you're doing here was the motivating reason for introducing that, so if you can satisfy the motivating reason without introducing the weak map primitive. And that's very interesting. So how can we validate, well, I guess we can, Daniel, do you have any idea how to validate this? Like maybe creating a bunch of things, see how memory is collected and so on, or? Yeah, I mean, experimentally, you could validate it with the finalization group. 
but uh, finalization registry. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like I, I still need to look at this code more um, offline and think it through because I don't yeah. quite understand the cycle issue. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I think that that the validation of this doesn't need to be in by testing an actual implementation. I mean, the garbage collection logic in here is clear enough that we should be able to desk, desk check it to the point where we're confident one way or another. Mark, question. Yeah. Do you remember why the need for, there was a need for weak map? Uh, because from what I understand here, basically it's the handler that somewhat has a uh, reference to the real uh, targets. So I'm, I'm trying to understand why um, why there might be a need for for weak map for for proxies um, in if if that's the case. Yeah, this this is the the line uh, three twenty four. So when you create a proxy handler, you have receive a pointer from the other side. That means the wrap function. You store it into uh, the handler itself. Or was it are weak maps only necessary if um, the object is referenced by a primitive somehow? But is identified by a primitive, or is it only if uh, in in those cases? No, the I mean in in the um, uh, I mean in the ECMAScript, you know, be, be, before before uh, records and tuples, um, you know, ECMAScript right now, primitives can't refer to objects. Only objects can refer to objects, uh, so that doesn't arise. Um, So the other interesting part of it, we can we can definitely get back to that and then oh, I'll, go, go ahead. I got it. In order to build a revocable membrane, the you've got to um, you've got to keep track of the things that you're going to revoke, and keeping track of those things itself. But that would be a weak map. That has to be a weak map. In that case, okay. it has to be a weak map. Okay. We don't do that. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yes. Yes. If we, if we, okay. I, was, I was thinking uh, about the same right okay. now. I was like, okay, if, when we create a proxy, which is new proxy here, okay. if we want to do revoke, we'll have to store this into a local weak map okay. and expose that. So at any given time, you can shut it down. Um, in that case, you do have to have a weak map. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good, good. That's 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 the issue. Is I have a I have a couple sidebar things here to bring up. Um, first off, regarding the finalization registry, um, I found out the hard way that getting that um, it's not yet as reliable, at least in the testing world, as you might hope. Um, about a week ago, I I was writing up a test for garbage collection on something that should have been garbage collected and it used finalization registry um, when I passed in two uh, when I passed in two arguments for garbage collection I'm sorry in when I created two weak references in the weak map okay two weak reference keys and then called GC and node it worked fine when I went up to three such keys it didn't work um, so that's just an FYI to be aware of. Could you, could you, do you have the code handy? I do, but I don't want to tie up this meeting with that. Okay. So, so uh, go ahead and, and off, you know, separately, just go ahead and post to this group, you know, to the maybe uh, CES strategy Google group, uh, a well, pointer to the code, because there's, there's several ways code can accidentally retain things that are in ways that, uh, prevent collection. Yeah. And so and there, a simpler way that it could be retaining it is the GC might not have happened yet. So if you're using V8, you can pass the dash dash expose dash yes. GC. Yes, yes, that's what I did. I wrote up a test and filed a bug on V8 for this actually. Okay. Oh, they'll probably say it's a won't fix thing. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the are only also thing is that the, 
finalization registry schedules. Um, okay, anyway, I guess you, what Mark said makes sense. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's um, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's um, the, the main thing that I would look for is um, uh, inadvertent capture by closure representation. Uh, and there are ways to code things to try to, you know, make that less likely. I'd love to take a look. I wrote hundreds of those tests, and uh, there were some very peculiar behaviors to be aware of of the engines. Give me a minute, and I'll I'll dig it up for you guys, and I'll post it in Slack here. Okay, um, okay. I'm sorry, not Slack, uh, the chat. Thank you. Um, that was one sidebar, and I forgot what the other one was. Uh, something to do with. Um, if it comes oh, back, if it comes back, you, you tell us. Yeah, it was something to do with uh, revocation. Um, so one other thing that uh, two more things I want to touch on. Um, the the first one is uh, in reference to Daniel's original proposal. Uh, it turns out that in order for the membrane to get ready to function, uh, the both sides of the membrane has to be ready, and both sides has to share or 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 uh, share the callables that are needed in order to do operations on the other side. Um, and that I ended up doing pretty much the same that Daniel was proposing originally, where there is a TDC aspect of it. You have to boot up the two sides of the membrane, um, start sharing those hooks in between, who shared first and so on. So it's a little tricky. And you see some, some examples of these in here. Um, that's, that's an interesting thing. So you, you always get back to that very primitive way of connecting the two sides via callables. Um, the second one is that I was able to implement a, a here uh, a single module whose only code is an init function. And uh, the init function is basically serializable, doesn't use anything from the scope. Um, uh, it, and this method is the one that I'm initializing in both sides of the fence, the exact same method. And once I have it initialized, I serialize it and evaluate it on the other side. It could be a module that I run on the other side and so on. Whatever the way to get that function ready on the other side, it's important to have it in both sides. Then when we have it in both sides, then what we do is uh, basically we have the the uh, the local one and the foreign one, and then you have to do the initialization with a bunch of functions that needs to be stored on the other side in order for the other side to interact with you. Um, a little tricky there, but uh, it's an interesting conversation to have in the future, how to maybe make this a little easier. Maybe we don't need it. Maybe this is sufficient for anyone to uh, set up the membrane on both sides of the fence and it's not only membrane, anything that requires some sort of coordination between the two of the two sides, you might need to use these functions and share functions with, with the different sides in order to be able to call, call back to the other side. Uh, so that was interesting as well. And then the final thing was this call, this, this thing that I call undefined symbol. And this is uh, particularly when someone tried to set up or trying to define a, a, a property on a proxy in one side that needs to be done in, uh, on the other side. The problem there was related to the fact that you can have a partial descriptor, not a real full descriptor, specifically when you do freezing or you do operations that carry on defined operations on the, on the target itself. Uh, those operations use what I call a, a, a partial descriptor. And so the undefined values uh, uh, has a implications that you assume that those are undefined when you pass the descriptor from one side to the other. So in that particular case, I had to do some extra work on telling the other side whether the value was undefined because the operation is saying that it's undefined or whether the value was not existent. And because of that, I had to use something that the other side understand that is not undefined, that is something different. That was the only detail there. Um, and there is, go ahead. 
I, I did not understand that. I, I'll start starting with the the, the motivating uh, first step, which is uh, what is a partial descriptor and how does it arise? Yeah. Um, so so let me see if I can find it here. Something a good example. Uh, when you do um, when you do in the proxy here, when you do when when define uh, where is it? The fine property, when it is invoked, uh, the, the, the trap, this is a trap. When it is invoked, the descriptor that you receive might or might not be a full qualifying descriptor. Could be, for example, that you're just setting up the, the, um, the, the changing the configurability of, of, the, of the descriptor, for example. Okay. Uh, in, in which case you need to do that operation on the other side, but you cannot assume that all the other things that you're passing to the other side will be undefined because it, it, so I, 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 I didn't understand that. The, if you have a partial descriptor, then you've got an object with some of the descriptor properties like configurable and without other descriptor properties like writable. Right, uh, okay, okay. I, I, I mean, let me try to explain. So one way to go about it is that, oh, I receive an object and I will proxy that object and give it to the other side and let the other side to, to, to decide. That's a, the, the mo most likely the safest way to do it, but that will be considerable slower. So I, I always, from that point of view, I'm always trying to do certain things that will speed up the membrane so it doesn't really carry on a, a, a significant amount of, of, of overhead. Um, so in, in, in this particular case, I decide not to do that operation and give it the descriptor to the other side as it's coming in instead and trying to take whatever meaningful information I can take out of that descriptor and pass it to the other side as primitive value so the other side can carry on the exact same operation. Mm -hmm. I Obviously, I, I, I understand that this is not super, uh, uh, completely transparent because you might you might do certain things with that descriptor. The descriptor might have different um, uh, uh, different behavior that might affect this. But I'm trying to follow the process of how the default trap will carry on this operation. Trying to do this operation on one side, extracting the data, pass it to the other side, build the thing on the other side, and run it on the other side on the reflective. And in that, in that process is when I found, okay, well, there are cases in which undefined needs to be uh, different from not existent. Okay, and so as, this, is, this is where I'm still, the, um, if the original descriptor was, let's just, you know, let, let's just say it was just a simple object that said, had a property configurable with value false and did not have a, pro did not have a numerable property. Mm -hmm. So what I would think would be that the copy you make on the other side also creates a descriptor that has a configurable property and does not have an enumerable property. Correct. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Yes. In so, order to do that, uh, because I need to pass the descriptor information to the other side uh, as arguments to a function because I can only call a function. I can only pass arguments to that function. Um, the arguments that I'm passing in, this is actually the function here. You can see it here. This is the function. I'm calling a defined property on the other side. It's a foreign call, callable. I'm passing the pointer, I'm passing the key, and I'm, pass, I'm passing the information about each of the things that you need in that descriptor. Some of them, if they are not existent, I need to tell that it's not existent so the other side can recreate it the same way. If it is undefined, it passes undefined. That's the difference. Gotcha. I gotcha. It's because we don't have records, the only way to pass information. Exactly, exactly. If we have records on tuple, this will be like, a, just you create a record and you pass a record. Got it. Got it. Okay, great. Yeah, and then the last detail that I think is also interesting uh, and JDD also called me on this one uh, when we were discussing internally is uh, the uh, on keys trap. Let me go to the on keys trap. The on keys trap, I think there are two, two cases in which I use this trick. 
because the onkey is returns an array of properties, uh, in this case, symbols or strings. Um, uh, and you don't have a way to return that object because it's a, it's a callable membrane. Instead, the trick that I'm using is I create a callback and I give the callback to the other side. So the other side, rather than returning <laughs> an array, it calls the callback and I use the arguments of that to build the array without having to do the membrane around it. But so he was calling me on, uh, there's a limit on the amount of arguments that you can pass in different browsers. So you have to be careful about this. Uh, but I was trying to avoid creating the extra, uh, uh, the, the extra thing. So using the callback trick when you need to give me a, a, a structure that is an object, I don't want to build that object and push it to the other side. I wanted to be able to find ways, you just call a function that provides that. Um, that's an interesting thing, but I, I feel that um, this is probably very safe, unless that you're using, I don't know, the limit of arguments uh, in terms of a, an object uh, or a, a, an object or an array that has too many elements that the number of keys will ex ex exceed the, the, the number of arguments that can be passed around, which is pretty rare. That's the only thing. Um, so this, this raises a question that I don't know how to answer. Um, for these uh, membrane crossing calls, uh, like this one, um, uh, what happens if in the function parameters you write a destructuring pattern? Ah, so very interesting. <laughs> uh, you, you got me on that one. That's the only thing that I haven't tested yet. And it, I was having issues uh, here. Uh, I'm having issues with this, um, which is precisely what you're saying. This is uh, a... Mm -hmm. a, 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 a basically, API is, is a proxy that was pushed by the other side onto me. And uh, this is a, 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 a the, the proxy on my side of an object from the other side. And this proxy is basically uh, an array. It's a, it's a proxy of an array. And I was using the structuring on it in order to get the, the first three items of that array. And I was seeing some issues there with the iteration. Uh, I haven't dig in that, that deep into this um, to give you a straight answer, but I, I will, I will. There, there, there's something going on with the, the structuring on, on, on these. And I used the, the structuring on the other example um, here, which I haven't been able to run. This is the, the structuring that was fading, basically, this line here. Uh, this local get ref is basically returning the array, which is a proxy of an array on the other side. And it was failing here with some errors. Um, I quickly debug it and say, okay, well, for the sake of having, got, having this running, let me just do a one, two, three and ignore the, 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 the iteration, but we'll have to get back to it. Okay. Because destructuring would also let you pass partial descriptors uh, directly, right? Right. So I, I need to debug it. I need to spend time debugging this. Let's see, I'll get back to you on this one. Very, very, very good question. Okay. It might yeah. be it won't really that. let you distinguish between holes and arrays or missing properties of objects and undefined, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what that would, but yeah, I wonder if the receiver is wrong or something like that in the iteration method, something like that. Yeah, it might be a, a, a box. I, I, I will, I'll debug it. I'll debug it today or tomorrow. See how far I can go. Um, so yeah, so I think I can go ahead, Mark, and add the shutdown feature just to validate uh, that we can shut down, which is something that you will do with iframe. If you disconnect the iframe, for example, there, there might be cases in which some things will stop, stop working. And, and um, I think figure out the, 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 the destructuring across the membrane and, um, and validate it with the polyfill from Leo, which we haven't get to that yet, than just using the regular iframe uh, 
Uh, so it's not really wrapping anything. It's just uh, uh, let it be. But at the end of the day, the implementation doesn't really care if you're wrapping it or not. Um, yeah, that's it. Let, let me say bravo. Uh, this is, you know, this is really an awesome validation of the design. It really is. Yeah, I was, uh, I was surprised that it, come, uh, it, it, it was tricky to come up with this idea. After a few iterations, that idea started getting into shape. It, it took me a while, took me a while to, to get there. But I feel that if we can get these out there saying, hey, with what we are proposing, you can do these other things if you want to. It's not a lot of code. It could be a simple library. In this case is just a class around Realm to do this iframe realm. It's very, very tiny, 2K, that's nothing. Uh, and if it works fast enough, we can validate that too. We, we have some people already doing some perf on this, see how far it goes in terms of perf, what is the penalty that we're paying. Um, I'm very eager to see if the perf of these is significant less than we have today in the near membrane implementation that we have. Obviously, the code is a lot less, a lot of less uh, weak maps, uh, lookups, and all these other things. So I'll be interested to see what's going on there. Um, so we're going to compare this with the near membrane that we have. Adding distortion is really easy. It's just each size can apply whatever distortion they want by providing a callback. Then when you call it with an object, it returns a different object. That's it. Uh, what does a function now? So it's very straightforward. Um, the identity correction, I'm not planning to do on this project, but it will be interesting to also explore. But I, I don't see any, any problem. After I build my mental model, I, I don't see any problem implementing any of this. Yeah, once, um, you, once you can do a transparent membrane with all of the variations on transparent membrane yeah. that we were able to do otherwise, you should be able to do starting from here. Yeah, and maybe tactically, we don't want to go that deep into membranes now we know it works. Uh, hopefully we can validate that it's not an issue with the memory and cycles and all that. But if, if all works fine, then when we go into the presentation, we, we can focus on this is the API that works for, for implementers. It works for us, for the use cases that we have. Uh, are we okay moving forward with this? And uh, So I would have one request, which is that to move forward on this, I would want uh, the membrane uh, to be, uh, uh, you know, the membrane built on top of this mechanism to be in test 262 as an integration test, uh, ensuring that, um, you know, as we maintain the spec, that, uh, we that we continue to maintain the degree of transparency of the membrane. Uh, Mark, I think that's a contract that we cannot have here because I like if, even if I don't have any uh, management over uh, test 262 uh, yet, I know like test 262 for maintenance uh, tries its best to not uh, not add anything that is like disconnected to, from the from the actual specs. If it's not in the specs, okay. it tries so, not. So I think we can have extensions and I think I can give you like the best because honestly, I can give you like all the best structure that runs as test262 and give you a project that runs with the th same test262 test runner. And I can provide you the best integration test with the same quality of test262. Uh, the, 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 the problem is that it needs to be um, uh, you know, part of the, um, you know, the output of TC39 in such a way that it's habitual for everybody to run it as part of, uh, you know, testing the spec as um, among, as well as testing the implementations. But I see, I do see your point and it raises a deeper issue, which is, is I, I asked for the wrong thing first. Uh, what we need is um, going back to uh, Yulia's uh, initiative on writing down high-level invariants. What we need as part of the mem of the realm proposal is the high-level invariant that a membrane this transparent 
can be built on the realm mechanism. So uh, I, you know, I share Mark's concern about how it's important that whatever tests we add as part of this effort are run habitually by people who maintain JavaScript implementations. That is not the case with different places that test 262 has expanded out and made things outside of the main path. For example, the, the parser tests. I think we should be more flexible about what we put into the main part of test 262 so that it will be run not just by the test 262 runner that, um, that Boku has made, but also by the runners that uh, the browsers have made and that they use in their continuous integration. So it would be, it would be pretty short-sighted in my mind to just update one runner and say, well, other people are expected to update other things because it just won't make the desk get run in practice. We've already seen that. It's been going on for years. Yeah, and, and we've talked before about the need for integration tests being uh, you know, a, a, along with high-level invariants. But, but the high-level invariance point really is prior because the high-level invariants state what the non-local properties are of the spec, and then the integration tests can be testing those non-local properties, which are therefore, you know, testing that multiple elements of the spec compose together to produce some particular result. 